Cemetery Short by me, and this time it's about my great grandmother on my father's side, and her name was Mary Ann Sharp. She was born in the country town in New South Wales, just sort of northwest of Newcastle, at a place called Maitland. She had a rather sad life. Uh, she met and married a man quite a lot older than her. And the sad thing is that both her and her husband, they moved to Newcastle after being married. And in the first few years of their married life, they buried two children, two males. And it turned out that the husband and her, of course, they went bankrupt. And having the documents, I see where they owed the undertaker for the burial of the two boys. They owed the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker. And she ended up at this, I guess what you'd call it in, um, in England, sort of a workhouse. Uh, but here it was sort of a, uh, a place for abandoned women. Here we see the same photo. This was the what they call the Sydney Benevolent Asylum. It wasn't for the mentally challenged. It was for people who were in absolute pitiful and dire straits, as was my great-grandmother. She had uh, Louise Facer with her, 11, Florence May, 9, and my, great, and my grandfather, Harold Edward, and he was 5. They were released into the husband's custody, and next thing I pick her up when she had passed away at the Silverwater Asylum. Again, it was a home for destitute women. You may pause this video and read the story about the asylum. It is now currently a part of the administration block of the Silverwater Detention Centre, a jail here not far from my home in Auburn. She died in 1903, as we will find out now. Mary Ann Sharp. Now the Sharp, when they first arrived in Australia, they had not the E attached to their name. On arrival in Australia, for some reason, they had uh, they placed the E on the name. Now Mary Ann was born on the 11th of November 1861 in West Maitland, New South Wales. She died on the 25th of June 1903, age just. 41. And it says there, Granville, the City of Parramatta Council, New South Wales, of course, boundaries changed a lot since uh, she was in the home, 1903. At that time, it was um, at Granville, um, which was a, a rough name for the whole locality. She was buried at Rookwood General Cemeteries um, and she was buried as a Congregationalist. I have no idea what religion she really was, probably at this stage of the game, none. Here we go, you can stop the, um, 
you can pause the video here and read about the uh, story behind the Newington Asylum, which is quite interesting. Here we have a plaque that was placed near where my great-grandmother was buried. The plaque reads, This plaque is to commemorate the memory of all babies and children buried in unmarked graves throughout this cemetery. They will remain in our hearts forever, never to be forgotten. All in good. But in this particular part of the cemetery, also paupers were buried. And behind me standing there next to the rock is where my great-grandmother is buried. Buried amongst stillborns. I shudder to think aborted babies, but whatever. They were all buried in somewhat mass graves, which is extremely sad. But I do thank my great-grandmother, Mary Ann Facer, for what she did and what she persevered with, because without her, they wouldn't be my grandfather. Uh, a great man who we'll talk about in another cemetery short. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to um, leave a like or a dislike, whichever pleases you. I'm not particular. They all help. And we will see you again. Oh, don't forget. Don't forget to subscribe. I don't do a lot of videos, but um, I, I do have a number. And you will find a lot of them linked on my webpage of handfacer.com. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.